Hello my friends and welcome, my name is Denis and this is the latest update from Ukraine. Finally we got the chart release for today and let me introduce some of the news to you, they are not good. Firstly, let's go to Kharkiv area where Russia has some of the success, actually they got it yesterday. So yesterday they were able to join their forces over here before the day before yesterday it was like that so their forces were separate and that was very hard for them and few days before ukrainian forces got the control over the ukrainian russian border here but russia put reinforcements causing our troops to change positions uh, near to the kharkiv do i think that kharkiv is in danger not really however it can be shelled by russian artillery they are not far away if we go for example uh, with our ruler here to the center of the city it's 23 kilometers from the Russian control positions and around 12 kilometers to the city edge. Ukrainian forces are here, there are lots of them and uh, they are defending the Kharkiv very hard and I'm sure that Russia will not able to take Kharkiv under its control and also because they concentrate their main forces near to Izum and on the eastern part of Ukraine. Their main goal for now, my friends, is to take control over this city, the Severodonetsk. That is what they do and I wouldn't say successfully, they have lots of losses. However, gradually they take uh, the city district by district every day. If we go to the timeline, my friends, you see that compared to yesterday, today they took, I would say, maybe 30% of the city and the Ukraine army controls, well, I think 20% and also there are some fighting ongoing in Metolkina and Voronova before Ukrainian army took them under their control again and now Russia tries to attack over here. Also, the very concerned information is for me that uh, this bridge was destroyed, uh, that's confirmed information, and this bridge over here, we don't know the information about it. And the other concerned information that there are still civilians in Serdanetsk, however, not in the city itself, not in a populated area, it's not populated anymore. They went to the basements of uh, this uh, factory. The factory name is Azot, my friends, and our main forces that are in this area also located in the factory. Well, it's hard to use this bridge, my friends, for evacuation. You can be expelled towards Russian artillery. And here are open places. If we go and see the satellite image, I hope it downloaded very well. So flat area it's quite open and of course the russian artillery systems are aimed towards the bridge and what is around and as i told you we don't know the information whether this bridge is okay or not probably not in that case it could be devastating not only for our army but as well as for civilians my friends it's very i'm very concerned about it what we need to do we need to organize somehow evacuation of our forces from Serdanets from what i see because russia puts their forces over and over again they have reinforcements they really want to take the city under control if we stay in the city for a very long time my friends so there will be lots of casualties also in ukrainian army so the smart way as for me is to do the same thing as we done before so retreat from serodonetsk to the factory at least uh, with all the forces that are here and to perform the counterattack with artillery shells. As you can see, this part, the Lysychansk itself, it's on a high ground, my friends. I don't know if you can see it on the satellite image. Hopefully you will see it. So it's, mm, no, it's better to use the topographic chart. So it's on elevation. This elevation helps uh, the artillery to perform better in a battle. So we can have the longer range. You can, you can have more precision and you can use different types of artillery systems for the longer range, even longer than they used to be before. 
and the second reason why we need to change position to Lysychansk is because we have the Siversky Donetsk River over here, which is the natural obstacle for the Russians all over the front lines mostly, and they cannot cross it very easily, we know it from the experience. Our military command knows better situation compared to ordering guy as me, uh, but I see from this chart that the situation for our army in Sever Donetsk deteriorates with every day, my friend friends so i put like 50 50 for our army to stay there or to evacuate now i put more for evacuation i think we need to leave this place for good and take it after then we'll have lots of new weapons coming from united states today uh, the minister defense minister of the united states told that there will be lots of weapons delivered to ukraine and now let's go a little bit to the south to papasna area i'm really surprised that we are holding zolote and we are continuing to fight for katerinivka my friends because russia has uh, reinforcements they increased their group uh, over here near to Papasna and now they want to circle our forces here and today there was no movement I'm very surprised and if we go to yesterday it was a little bit of counter-attack from Russian uh, from Ukrainian forces sorry near to Vasilovka and Russian Russian forces retreat to Lipova my friends so we are fighting near to this road we are protecting it because it's the main road for our supplies to be delivered to Lysychansk and we crucially need it but I still concerned about uh, Zolote so probably need to get back to Yurske but maybe because we have some of the hills there it's very easy to have the shelter um, but I still think we need to get back to Hirske probably and try to maintain control over this road over here on the way to Lysychansk my friends so quite tricky yeah for Ukrainian army in Serdonetsk and Zolote my friends however I'm still not very much concerned about the Lysychansk I think we should stay there because we have the main road supply and we have the backup road Russia would not get that road under their control, sorry, I'll just zoom in for you. So it's from Bakhmut, Bakhmut itself, Bakhmut is here. From Bakhmut goes uh, to Siversk and from Siversk goes to Lysychansk. That road is kind of small one, kind of bumpy, well, every road is bumpy now because of the shells, but this road is much better to deliver goods but it's very near to the front lines and of course it's very dangerous to deliver goods to Lysychansk and Syrdonetsk but still we have even volunteers who use this road to provide supplies to the army all right the situation that concerns me more than even the Lysychansk is here my friends it's near to the Svetoyersk Svetoyersk was betrayed by its mayor mayor said I'm pro-Russian now and join Russians that mayor blames Ukraine for everything and I got some of the messages from the Russian bots saying that Ukraine is not right that we are shelling our own cities so, my friends it's total nonsense we have just uh, traders uh, and they betray their own nation their country for money and for positions so they kept his position as a mayor of Svetohirsk but there are some of the mayors who withstand Russian aggression and under the pressure they're still pro-Ukrainian so we have different people everywhere I'm very concerned about the Bogorodichne some of the Russian troops were able to cross the river using this bridge however we fought them hard and they retreated back but they moved from Izum direction actually using this road and they are pushing through the woods just directly to Bogorodichne I would say they are very close to the city uh, how far are they from it just three kilometers maybe four kilometers my friends very very close and what they want to do they will take Bogorodichne they will build the bridge across um, the Svetohirsk and Bogorodichne again uh, using their own forces and they will try to attack on this road over here which is leading directly to Slavyansk and from what I see there are no any natural obstacles if they would 
across uh, the river here we have the big one you see the water storage so it's kind of obstacle for them to attack from this uh, position over here directly to Slavyansk and of course they're gonna push from Liman direction from this direction towards the Radio Gorodok because it's the closest position for them uh, from the Slavyansk it's just 13 kilometers really nothing and yeah they're gonna deflect reflect deflect our forces uh, towards Liman direction but the main attack would be probably from Bogorodichne from this direction their goal is to take Slavansk together with uh, Kramatorsk cities and actually I have my roots my ancestors coming from uh, this area somewhere from Kramatorsk and also partially from the Kharkiv area somewhere here if we move a little bit to the north here I was really concerned about this area but so far I see that Russians cannot cross uh, the river and more or less this area is secured by Ukrainian forces if we go to the south where Ukraine forces got their massive attack towards uh, the south in Kherson Oblast Russia started to fight in this area they put reinforcements they got them from Zaporizhia Oblast and uh, today they were able to push us a little bit uh, from Bilohirka village and from Davide Brit. Uh, so they are now fighting for this small village and for this crossroad. And we want to take this crossroad, obviously, to take this uh, road on the way to Noah Kahoka to take this dam under control. But still, we are very far away, my friends. Oh, sorry we need to cross uh, 47 kilometers for nowadays it's too much russia uses their aviation in this area so it's very hard my friends i got some rumors so far unconfirmed information that our troops were able to get uh, towards tomino balka but on this chart i don't see it uh, so if we measure the distance from the city center here it's 24 kilometers and from the city border it's around 15 kilometers but some guys told that we are already 8 kilometers away from Kherson we are 10 kilometers away from Kherson uh, my friends on this chart I see that from the center of Kherson we are 32 kilometers away and from this direction uh, from the center of Kherson it's 26 kilometers my friends now it's too early to say that Kherson will be recaptured soon because as I said to you Russia puts uh, put their forces near to Kherson they built defense lines they do not assault towards the Mikhailov so far because they put their main forces on the eastern part but their idea is to take the full Kherson Oblast, Kriviri, Mikhailov, Odessa but we all know that they don't have enough forces for that. As for the rest of the front lines, my friends, there is no big change. Our army continue to fight. You see bad news mostly, but understand that it is Russia. Promised to be the second largest army in the world and small Ukraine, well, compared to Russia, fights against them successfully i would say because we use the special tactics to cause significant losses for russians my friends thank you very much for your support now press the like and also if you can you may support this channel just check the video description below there are some ways how you can do it my friends stay awesome wherever you are i wish you a peaceful sky and have a great time